Today's mailbag is presented by Magic Spoon. Get $5 off your first order of cereal that tastes too good to be true. Tastes like the cereal that we grew up with, but is actually healthy for you. It's got low carbs, high in protein, and zero sugar as well. So get $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon cereal at magicspoon.com slash chat. That link, by the way, folks, will be clickable in the comment section and in the description. But one more time for you, it's magicspoon.com slash chat. Go get yours today. It's so delicious and yet also very healthy for you. From John Dorman, if Lawrence didn't come out, who would have gone number one overall? I think it would have been Zach Wilson. Now, I would have pushed for Justin Fields as I did as him as my number two uh, quarterback or yeah, quarterback pretty heavily there, but I think Zach Wilson would have been the next most likely guy. All right, from Kyle Daughtery, will TJ Watt sign an extension this summer or mid-season? Um, I, I think that the most likely outcome here is that he signs an extension at some point with Pittsburgh. I, I don't know exactly when that ends up happening. But I hope it happens at, at some point soon for Pittsburgh. Maybe it's in the summer before camp. Maybe it's after the season. But there's no way that the Steelers don't pay T.J. Watt, right? Like they have to go do that. From C. Garcia, 55. Do the Seahawks have enough cap space to trade for Xavier Howard? Or do they have to restructure Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner's contract? So they would have to restructure some deals. They, they, they would have to go do that. But I, I think that restructuring Wagner and Bob er, and, er, and Wilson is worth it. That's not a bad thing if you're Seattle. It locks those guys into your organization long term. That's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. So, yes, they have, to re, they have to restructure contracts, but not a bad thing in the end. A super chat. King Higgins has gone ahead and claimed the... MVP of today's video, a $5 super chat. King Higgins, thank you very much. I appreciate it. From Lil Eden, Richard Sherman to the Titans, their defense sucks. Their defense was pretty bad last year, although a big part was because they had zero pass rush. Like, they did not have a, a good option in that perspective. They, they were severely lacking the, the pass rush. And in theory, Bud Dupree helps fix that, right? Now, they've got Caleb Farley, who I like a lot, but has the injury issues. Janoris Jenkins, I think Elijah Molden is maybe a nickel for them, maybe a free safety, kind of a weird hybrid player there. Christian Fulton's also on that team, too. So because of that, I don't mind it. If Farley's healthy, though, I think they're fine at corner. From Mark Pryor, ooh, what a good question here. Who is the worst starting running back in the NFL? Ooh. I, I think the answer here, isn't it Michael Carter? Or is it, I think it's somebody in the AFC East, right? It's probably, insert Bills player, but probably not. The Dalt, is it Miles Gaskin? I like Michael Carter, but he's a totally unproven rookie. You know, Bears, Lions, Packers, Vikings, Falcons are fine, Panthers, Saints, Bucks. I, I think it's one of those AFC East teams. May it's not David Johnson, so I think in the end I'm going to go Mike Hart, who I like, but for now is the worst starter. From Robert Bruce, hello Saw, Sam, hello Tom, hello Jeremy, producer Perry today. It's okay, Robert, he hasn't done much NFL stuff. Shout out producer P, though. Uh, the Patriots are still in need of a good wideout. Are there any good free agents left at wide receiver? Do you think Alshon Jeffrey is good? Um, if so, yes. If not, which probably not, eh, the answer is probably a no on that one. From Sucka 5 k will the Seahawks bring back Richard Sherman? We always seem to end up with a Richard Sherman question some way or the other. Um, I'm going to lean towards no. I think in the long run, Seattle does not re-sign Sherman. Now, he will retire, I believe, as a Seattle Seahawks player, but I think the more likely outcome here is that Seattle does not end up going after Sherman, and they pick somebody else altogether in the free agent market or trade for a veteran because I think they are going to wait, and by then Sherman will found a destination, if they sign anybody, of course. Now, I think a popular answer here is going to end up being Richard Sherman, but who is the best 
unsigned NFL free agent. Who is it? Get your votes in for me right now in the comment section. What free agent do you believe is the best one that is still available on the open market? Get your votes in for the comment section right now. From JG, what team will be the black horse this year? I think you mean dark horse. Uh, I have, I, I've never heard it as black horse before. Technically true, but also kind of wrong. If you mean dark horse like sleeper team, to make a very, very deep run, I, I might go Washington, actually. In terms of making the postseason, Denver if they find a good quarterback. Uh, beyond that, I am at least... I'm not going to pick them. That, that's too early. Um, can I throw in the Patriots? They feel like cheating, but the, the, the Patriots have talent, and they get a lot of their key defensive pieces back and healthy, so I'll go Patriots and Washington in the respective AFC-NFC. From Jay Youngblood, a super chat challenging Kig Higgins to be MVP today. Uh, which will be better, the Raiders' offensive line or the Raiders' defensive line? Uh, two, I think, justifiable concerns given the way that they've overhauled both of those things. Um, I think I'm actually... I'm going to leave defense. That, now, that, that requires Yannick Ngakwe to be the guy I think he can be, and that interior of the defensive line, a big concern to actually step up. I'm going to lean defensive line. I think it's close, though, and I think both of those areas have some significant concerns. From C. Garcia, 54. Do you see the, K the Chiefs signing K.J. Wright? Uh, short answer is no. The long answer is I don't think that they really need him. Now, in general, most teams are going to use two, maybe three linebackers at any given time, at least in terms of not edge rushers, right? But it's mostly two. They've got Anthony Hitchens under contract and two second-round picks, Nick Bolton and Willie Gay Jr. If everyone is healthy, well, simply put, they don't need another linebacker. From Grayson Wolford, will Mike McCarthy be on the hot seat? If the Cowboys are bad, well, then maybe. If the Cowboys are what we think that they can be, which is a borderline playoff team, if not the outright favorite in the NFC East, then no. If the Cowboys win six games this year and Dak's healthy the entire time and plays well and just the team's bad again, then at that point, perhaps. But I don't expect that to be the case for Dallas. Today's mailbag is made possible by the best-tasting healthy cereal out there. That's Magic Spoon. Get five bucks off your first order at magicspoon.com slash chat. Tons of flavors for you guys, and they are all high in protein, which, you know, helps you get bigger and help and the, the four low carbs, by the way. That, that's it, just four net grams there. Helps to work on the dad bod I've cultivated, which I'm not proud of as I jiggle my stomach like Santa Claus. It's also, though, sweet and delicious. It tastes like the cereal that we grew up with, but it's actually good for you. Get $5 off your first order by grabbing a box or four of them over at magicspoon.com slash chat. I will have a clickable link in the comments section and in the description for you guys so that all you have to do is click it and get your first order today. Magicspoon.com slash chat. From Dan, did the Cowboys get Xavier Howard? Um, I actually just did a video about Xavier Howard on our Cowboys channel. Go check it out, Dan. I think the answer is no, and if they were, I think they would have to find a way to include Kelvin Joseph in a trade, because otherwise, where are you playing your young corners? From J J Jingling, uh, where do you sign, or where do you rank Sertan for Defensive Rookie of the Year? Getting a lot of hype so far. Is he getting a lot of hype? I'm not sure. If Sertan was in Dallas, I think he would be among the top five betting favorites. As we sit right now, I reached out to one of my bookie buddies, here are the 2021 Defensive Rookie of the Year odds. Micah Parsons at plus 500, the Cowboys linebacker. Miami Dolphins edge rusher Jalen Phillips, plus 700. Linebackers for Washington, Cleveland, Jamin Davis and Jeremiah Wusu koromoa are both plus 800. Then there's Quiddy Pay for the Colts, pass rusher, plus 1,000. Cardinals linebacker Zayvon Collins, plus 1,200. And then Patrick Sertan and J.C. Horn. Sertan might be blocked to immediate massive playing time by the great cornerback room in Denver. That causes a problem. Because of that, 
I think, you know, just outside the top five is probably pretty fair. Bit high on Quiddy Pay, but hey, he's going to get a chance, right? So I want you guys now to make your predictions for me. Who do you believe will end up winning Defensive Rookie of the Year? Defense, not offense, folks. So make your predictions for me in the comments section. Who do you think will win Defensive Rookie of the Year? Is it Jamin Davis, Owusu Koromoa, Micah Parsons, uh, it's a different corner? Get your votes in right now. From Big Chungus, who would win? Who would give the Broncos a better chance of going to the playoffs, Bridgewater or Drew Locke? If it is growth from Drew Locke, if he is better than what he's been, I think I lean Drew Locke. If it is what they've been last year and beyond, it's probably Teddy Bridgewater. The issue is, who here has immense confidence in either of those guys? I kind of don't. So because of that, I don't feel great right now about Denver's playoff chances. From Adrian, just Adrian, better season in 2021, Tyree Kill or Travis Kelsey? Um, my answer's yes. They're both awesome. I think I will, until he regresses or becomes not as good anymore, I think I'm going to go with Travis Kelsey. Because even though, you know, Tyreek Hill was 100%, blah, 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 Kelsey was incredible last year. 97 catches, 1,229 yards, five touchdowns. That level of production was pretty damn crazy for, for Travis Kelsey. So I don't think there's a wrong answer here necessarily, but I'm going to lean towards Travis Kelsey. Both of those players are among the best at their respective positions. And Kelsey is aging. Better off the field stuff, too, if we're being honest. But he is an impact player. And I think among tight ends, both guys terrify me. I'm going to go Kelsey in real life and, of course, in fantasy, in case you were wondering about that one. From Vincent Sorloretti, Xavier Howard to the Steelers for safety depth with Mika Fitzpatrick. Thoughts? So... Do you mean that the Steelers trade Xavier Howard or trade for Xavier Howard in exchange for Steelers for safety depth or he becomes safety depth? Because Xavier Howard's a corner. And if you're only offering some of the backup safeties for Pittsburgh, uh, the Dolphins tell you to F off. Like they're going to get a way better offer, probably something similar to what they got in exchange for Minka Fitzpatrick as part of that deal way back when. So... Look, I don't really think that it's going to be a, a Pittsburgh Steelers trade that gets Howard done, but at least call, right? From King J, what city gets an NFL team next? Um, London? They're kind of like a hybrid team. It, it, it's very complicated from a travel perspective, but I, London always makes sense. I, San Antonio is constantly mentioned, but they've already got two Texas teams. That's a bit of a stretch to me, so... I'll go London, but I don't think it's imminent by any stretch of the imagination. From Bunny Gamer, if you were in the Seahawks shoes and you had to extend one person or one person's contract, who would it be? Jamal Adams or Quandre Diggs? I love both of them. Don't get me wrong on that, that front. But I think that the correct answer here is Jamal Adams. You gave up so much to get him. He's an awesome football player. He's not a true safety. Whatever. Who cares? Even though I love Quandre Diggs, I'd rather have it be Jamal Adams.